All right, hey, what's up, guys? Uh, this is gonna be part five of how to use Baya as a 3D Max user. Uh, today's gonna be a little bit less of a comparison between the two because the tools are pretty different. So I'm gonna be talking about curves today. All right, so if I open 3D Max here, if we just go over to the Shape tab, you can draw out a spline like that. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about today is just creating these curves inside of Maya, okay? So you'll find the curves under the Curve Surfaces tab over here on the left. And the one that you wanna look for, I think it's called EP Curve Tool, but it's this one with all the points. And this is just gonna let you draw out nice curves on the grid. And you can just click and drag, and you can also just hit Enter to complete it. So if I draw out a second one, right? So just kind of like you're accessing verts, faces, and all that, you can access the sub object by right clicking. You can go to control vertex and you can move these points to manipulate the curve to whatever shape that you want. All right. And in combination with a couple of these tools on the right, we're gonna be able to start creating surfaces. So one of the first ones that's really easy, if you just wanna get a quick uh, surface created, you just use the loft tool by selecting two curves and then it'll create, it'll join them with a surface. And you're gonna notice very early on that it's black and you're, that actually just means that it's, those are the, the normals are facing the wrong way. And a really simple way to fix that is just go to surfaces, reverse direction, and you're good. So if you see black, it's not, it's not like the end of the world. There's a quick button to fix that, okay? So that's the gist of it. So why would you wanna use curves? And it's really just because it lets you create some really nice smooth surfaces. I've used it primarily for knives or anything with a lot of elegance or I haven't actually done like a, a 3D model car, but I'm working on a jet. This is the kind of tool that's really good for it. And of course you can always use polys, right? Um, in fact, a lot of people do just still use polys even for uh, nice smooth curved surfaces because it gives you the most control. And in the end, in order to really use curves, you have to transition it to polys anyways but it's kind of um, just a good way to get like some form down quickly. So you can create any kind of curve with polys as well, but it just can take a little bit more work. So let's go over some ways that you can control and manipulate the curve. So I'm just gonna draw out some more lines here. Okay. Now let's say you wanted to connect these two with another curve. Um, you're gonna wanna activate this curve snap here. There's a hotkey, but my hotkeys are different, so I'm not even going to say it, but um, usually it's like X, I think, to activate. No. It's one of the, the C, X, Z keys, but I disabled mine for now. I just click the button when I need it, because I don't use it that often. And what you do is, with this enabled, you can just click and drag anywhere along an existing curve, and then the other point, you can click and drag as well, and then hit enter to complete it. So now we've got a curve in between two curves that are pre-existing. Okay, so we can give it kind of a profile. We call this a profile. And today I'm really also gonna talk about the bi-rail tools. So you've seen the loft, I'll just do it really quick, right? So that's connecting those two curves. But one of the most useful features with curves is using bi-rail. And you'll find that under surfaces and bi-rail. And here there's three different versions. And bi-rail can really be thought of as profile shape. So in this case, I have two kind of length long curves right and then i have what we can consider kind of like a profile shape in this case we're just going to use by rail one and i'll talk about what the other two do as well so with it selected i'll go to surfaces by rail one and if you go down if you look at the bottom left hand corner it says by rail one profile curve selected select two rails so these are kind of two rails so think of like train tracks so that's a rail so now i've got that selected already. It's got its one profile shape um, stored. I click the next two rails and it'll automatically create that form for me. And I'm just gonna reverse this. Okay, so I've got form like that. Now, you notice that that resolution was pretty crap. Let's do it again. Let me just, uh, so by rail, right? We've got our profile selected and select the two curves and you can hold shift to multi-select. And if you look at this, the resolution is pretty poor. It's not a nice curved surface. That's because our curves, when we drew them out, didn't have enough resolution to um, cleanly display this nice arcing shape. So what we need to do is we need to rebuild the curves, and that's what we're going to do now. 
Under curves, you'll see that there's an option here to rebuild and we're not gonna just click it, we're gonna go into the options. And then also under surfaces, there's another option to rebuild. So I'll show you what both do. In this case, because we have a surface already drawn out, we can try using surfaces and we're gonna go into the options here. And I'm just gonna use the default settings, but let's just try what happens. So rebuild. And you'll notice that it automatically added more resolution to our surface and made it nice and smooth. So if I isolate this, that looks better. It's not it's not 100%, but it's it's better, right? And it's up to you depending on what your output, your final output if you're doing a video game or cinematic kind of 3D model, you might want more or less resolution based on what you see. Okay? So that's using the um surfaces rebuild. You can also if I hide that you can also re rebuild the curves itself. So if we right click and we go to control vertex, you can kind of count the points, right? So let's just count the, the, the pink points that we have here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six control points and each of these spans in between are different lengths. Well, when we go to rebuild curves, it's gonna rebuild this curve with the amount of new points that we enter and also it's gonna determine how uniform those are gonna be. So under rebuild curves, I'm just going to reset the settings again just to make sure. And I'll just try the default. So if I hit rebuild, and if I undo it, you can notice that it kind of changes it slightly, but overall the start and end points are gonna be exactly the same. Okay, so if I check out how many points there are, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so it's rebuilt it. And another reason why you'd wanna rebuild um, the curve is perhaps your curves, uh, let's say A and B, may have different points. So sometimes if you've worked on two segments separately and you want to make a piece in between and you want them to have the same number of spans, you'll want to rebuild both curves. So in this case, I'll just do that. So I'll select both of these curves and I will rebuild. Actually, let me just, okay. Let's say I want six. So I want six, right? One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. And I'm going to rebuild this one as well because there's not enough resolution in it. So I'm going to go to curves, rebuild six points. Look how much smoother that became, right? So now let's try the viral tool again. So I'll select this, the profile shape viral one, and that looks much better. Now I keep using the surfaces reverse direction tool because it, it so often happens that your surface will be reversed from what you actually want that I just added it to the hot bar here um, on the right because I use that so often. So I'm going to start using this button instead of going through the menu each time, but just know that you can find it under surfaces reverse direction. Okay. And definitely keep in mind um, when you're first using these curves that there is a difference between the curve and the surface. So you'll have different options for each of these. Now that was using Byrel one, but what happens if you have a different shape on the other end, you want to transition this rounded arc into a different shape by the time you hit the second end. Well, let's just double check again what happens. So so what happened here was by default, it maintained the original shape all the way through but that doesn't always happen. And perhaps you don't want it to be the exact same shape on this, the, the far end of our curve. So let's draw out a second shape. So we have our curve snap tool activated. We have our EP curve tool selected. And I'm just going to draw a line here. Okay. And I'm going to go into the control points. I'm just going to make something different. Maybe, maybe we want it flat. And again, this doesn't have a ton of resolution and I'm actually going to want it to be the same resolution as this curve so that we maintain the same number of segments in between from the start to the end. So I think it'll have the same settings. So under curves, we're just going to go to rebuild. Let's give it six, right? So it's nice and smooth. So now we have two, what you could almost consider profile shapes. And actually I'll give it a little bit of depth just because, right? So we have some weird kind of trough. So we're going to go from this shape to this shape. In this case, in order to capture this profile, we actually want to use the second option, which is Byrel 2. 
okay? That means, again, you can kind of think of that as two profiles with Rails. Rails is going to assume that you have two, like a train track. So we're going to select the first one, Biral 2. And if we look at the lower left-hand corner, it says select the second profile curve. So we're going to hold Shift, drag. Now it knows that it has this first shape on the left and then the second shape on the right. And now it's looking for two rails to um, basically extrude these shapes together. And it's going to have to find a way to transition them. So selecting that, and you can see if I reverse direction. I'm just going to hide the grid for a sec. It's done exactly what we told it to do. It went from a rounded shape, arcing shape, into kind of like a gutter. So let's say that we wanted to add additional shape. Let's say in the middle of that awkward form, we wanted something even different than both of those. So let's create another one. Again, I'm just creating this by clicking and dragging on the line. And I'm just gonna hit enter to complete. And let's just say that in the middle, something weird happens. Maybe we get kind of a one-sided shape like that. I'm just gonna rebuild this one as well. Okay, so we're gonna go from, we no longer have just one at the start and a second one at the end. We're also gonna have a middle profile that we wanna hit. And that's where you would use something like the by rail three plus and the plus being you can have any number that's more than three right so you could have as many profile curves as you want depending on the kind of detail in general you're probably pretty much going to want to stick with one of these two um, unless you're doing something really complicated so let's give that a shot so let's go by rail three plus so if we read just let's it just helps to read the bottom left corner by rail three, select additional profiles and press enter when you're done to start rail selection. So it doesn't know how many profiles you want. So it's gonna just tell you to select as many as you want. And then when you've finished selecting, you already select the rails, you hit enter just to make sure. So let's pick the first one on the left, second one in the middle, I'm shift clicking and dragging to select these. So I've got my three. Now it's it doesn't know that I'm ready, but I'm gonna hit enter. Now it's gonna read at the bottom, select two rail curves. So now I just select these two and look at that. It's found a way to blend all three of those profile shapes together. Okay. It's worth noting that while you have that surface created, you can still manipulate it by manipulating the curves themselves, right? So you have full control over what exactly is being made here. Okay, now I'm gonna leave this off to the side. I'm going to just duplicate it and delete the history. And before we move on to how to convert this to polys, I wanna talk more about some of the tools that you have for manipulating curves and stuff. So I'm just gonna hide this and I'm gonna delete that. And this object is just gonna, because I deleted history, it has no connection to those, those curves or anything. So it's independent. All right, so we've really covered about 80% of the functions that I use with curves. Uh, I've got one more that I wanna mention after this, but I just wanna talk about how we can manipulate drawing the curves themselves. So for example, let's say you wanted to cut. Now, there are tools over here that we can use to manipulate our curves. So I'm just gonna to go to curve point. And if you click on curve point, that allows you to basically select anywhere along this curve by clicking and dragging. And using these tools up here, this one with the knife, if you click on that, it cuts the curve into two curves based on where that point was. Okay, so we've just detached that point. And let me just do that again just to show you. So again, shift, or sorry, just right click. Click anywhere you wanna cut the line and just hit the knife tool. Now it's been divided, okay? And you can see that because when I click on one, it doesn't highlight the entire thing, it just selects half. Let's say you wanted to reverse that and you wanted to attach them together. Select the two curves and you connect by hitting this button here, attach curves. 
Okay, and that's combined the curves together. However, it's important to know that when you attach curves, it doesn't delete the old segments. So if I move that, this is the newly formed attached curves, as you can see in the outliner. The original two curves remain. So when you attach too many curves together, your outliner can get really filled up and confusing. And I'm going to show you an example of one of my scene files that just became a mess in, in later on. Okay, so just know that whenever you attach curves, it creates a new one on top of it. Now let's say that we have, let me just draw another curve. Okay, just in the middle of nowhere. Let's say I want this curve to touch the existing curve up here. How do I get this to not line up sort of on it, but 100% on it. Because we talked about the by roll tool, one thing that you're going to want to make sure you do is that the profile curve and the rail curves are touching, they won't it, that function will not work unless you have those points touching the rail. Okay. So how to get this to snap on we'll first turn on your line snap, your curve snap, and doing that makes it hard to manipulate. And even though it's kind of following the curve a little bit, it's not actually attaching to it. So with the lot, the curve snap selected, what you actually want to do is you want a middle mouse click. Okay, again, middle mouse click and drag along the edge. Okay. So if I get in really close, it's still not snapped completely. And part of that has to do with the resolution of the curve. There's not a ton of resolution on this. So it's kind of having a hard time figuring out exactly where to go. But as you can see, if you go to corners, you have a much higher chance of it lining up. And if I were to zoom in really closely, this line is actually attached to that line now. Not attached, but it's on the same path. All right, so same thing. I'll just go to my curve control vertex. And with curve snap selected, middle mouse click, and I can get that right on top of that line. So let's pretend I have a more extreme example. Let's say it was up here. And I want this point to be exactly on that point, middle mouse click along the line, click and drag. And it's kind of funky, it can kind of give you problems. But just keep don't give up. Okay. So I've got those snaps to the path. Now let's say that I wanted to create, um, let me just manipulate these a little bit so we get something interesting to look at. Let's say that I wanted to create um, a by rail with just this from this profile shape to these two rails. But unfortunately, I have this kind of segment on the left hand side, well, I can divide this segment. So I select the segment, and I want to divide it by this new one that I've created in the middle. That's what this icon here is too. cuts two curves where they intersect. Okay. So I have this curve and I have this curve Well, I'm going to select both and cut where they intersect. So now I have a brand new curve, I can just delete this one, where they intersected. Okay, and then I can go and do my by rails. So I'll just do that for demonstration. By rail one, because I just have one profile shape. And it created a mess. Okay, so sometimes you'll just want to when you've done a lot of like kind of cur curve editing and deleting, you want to make sure that the curves are rebuilt. So I'll select both of these curves. And I'll just rebuild them just if you get errors like that, because I was pretty much as bad as it gets guys, uh, I'm just gonna rebuild it. So six. Let's rebuild this one. Let's do four. And this should work. Hopefully. Okay. So if you want to kind of minimize the chance for error, in general, the way to fix things is to just rebuild your curves and that should solve your problem. 
Okay. So that's honestly pretty much it for what you can, you know, creative uses for using curves. You can import an image of like a car and start dragging curves. And I'm going to show you some examples here in a minute. Real quick though, one of the ones that you're going to want to know, because this is super easy, is let's go to front view. So I've gone to this viewport and I'm going to draw out something. You'll probably guess what it is. Okay. I've created something and I'm going to use this tool here called revolve. It kind of looks like a something and it uses that curve and revolves it 360. So it's really easy for creating cups. Okay. Now I can still manipulate it. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to reverse it so you can see. So I've got a cup here. Okay, and I can actually still manipulate the shape with the curves. So let's say you want to make a wine glass. And this is pretty ugly, but whatever. Um, let's say you want to convert this into polygons. So this is super important, right? Like cause in the end, everything wants to become polygons. Like how are you going to UV it? How are you going to texture it? Whatever. So convert it to polygons and that's what you want to know how to do. All right. So let's say I'm super satisfied with how beast my cup looks and I'm ready for, you know, taking this to the next step. I'm sorry. This shape is just really bugging me. It's, it's pretty awful. Anyway. So the way to convert is to go to modify, convert, all right? You have your object selected, modify, convert, nerves to polygons, okay? And I'm just going to make sure the settings are default. So take a look, you know, you can, it's pretty simple, but let's make sure that we set to quads because we like quads. And I'm just going to set it to general. And this is kind of the only thing that you may not like, is not uh, immediately obvious, but you want to, one of the best results that you'll get is by switching both the U and the V type to per span number of isoparms. Okay. So let's just see what happens. And so it created a cup in polys now. So this is fully usable. So this is the nerve version. This is the poly version. And one of the things though that happens is we're not going to use this. Um, let's pretend that what we're going to use this for is for like a cinematic render, right? Uh, this is pretty jagged resolution. It's not very good. So if we were to subdivide it, right? So obviously we would do some kind of smoothing. The resolution that we exported from the NURBS or converted from the NURBS wasn't enough to maintain the exact shape of our NURBS model. Okay. So if I make this transparent, you can see very subtly that our subdivided polygon model when subdivided is not the exact shape of the cup. And that can be kind of annoying because the thickness at some of the more detailed parts will become more narrow than what you had originally. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that our polygon conversion is exactly the same as our nerves version. So this one, I mean, it's close, right? Like from, from like a medium shot, you're not going to tell the difference, but if you're like me and you really care about every little thing, then, that is super annoying. So let's just delete that. Okay. And let's do it again. So let's go to convert nerves to polygons options. And there's different settings in here, but in general, what you really want to do is you're just going to want to increase the number of spans that are created. Okay. So let's try instead of three, we'll get six. And while it creates a much denser model, like that's that's pretty damn dense, especially down here on the, the neck of it. When we subdivide this model, the change, because it has so much more resolution, so much more support, supporting edges and everything. When we subdivide, the shift in shape is so much less. So it's much more accurate compared to our NURBS model. Okay. So depending what you're striving for, if you're doing like a cinematic model, or if you're doing a game mesh, you can play with that setting of, let me just show you, convert nerves to polygons. You can play with this setting. Again, the best results will come from this third option down here. Okay. 
So if you wanted to do, let's say we took this cup and we're like, oh man, we need this to be super low poly. We can do that, no problem. By setting the span number to one. And this is what you get. I mean, it's the basic shape, right? It's like, it's good enough. This is good enough for, you know, whatever. If you look at cups in games, man, sometimes they're like cubes. They're literally cubes. So you can get away with stuff like that. Okay, and then you can add your thickness to it, whatever, um, any way you want to do that. So let's say, I'm going to turn off the snap. Let's say I just wanted to give that some thickness, right? Right, so there's our low poly cup from a NURBS. And that took like two seconds like to draw the NURBS curve. So NURBS, are, NURBS curves are super powerful for creating mesh and geometry. Okay, one more thing I forgot to mention was if you select your NURBS model and you right click and select isoparm, that al allows you to select these, these edges, right? Well, if I select and click and drag, you can actually select anywhere along your model. And if you go to surfaces, insert isoparms right here, you can add edges manually, right? So if you want, and the reason why I bring that up is for a model like this. Oh, so that's gotten all messed up because I, I referenced the, I modified the nerves model. So I'm just going to, I have a button up here. I'm just going to delete history on that. So that doesn't happen. So again, isoparm. If you click and drag, you can go to surfaces, insert isoparm, and that lets you manually add resolution if you want to. So let's say that this model was a little bit too low for me. I'm just going to manually add in a couple of uh, isoparms along, really it's along not so much the straight areas, but the areas where it bends, right? That's where you want to add the most resolution. So I'm just going to add one more and we'll just see what happens. Okay, let's add, um, just add a few more. And this is the kind of thing that you'd want to put on a hotkey or something because you don't want to go through the menu every single time. Okay, so I've just manually added some resolution to the areas with the most change. Okay, now let's go to modify, convert nerves to polygons. And I just set it to one, so it's literally just going to create an edge wherever there's a line here. So if I do that, right? So compared to the straight edge of this cup, wherever I manually inserted an isoparm, it has a little bit more resolution. And obviously this looks like crap, right? You can still still do this. You can still soften the edges, whatever. Okay, so that's really important to know is that you can insert isoparms. Okay, so now I wanted to just show you some examples of how I've been using curves, um, mainly for knives. I just think that um, curves are so good for creating knives. So this, you can kind of tell, right, with the elegance of this, this was simple, very simple curvature. Now, when we haven't talked so much about like the depth, but really all, let's say this edge along here, right, it's just a matter of starting flat and then kind of pulling out into like the Z axis and giving it some depth to create some form. So just showing you a couple of knives, right? And this isn't purely using curves. I started off with a simple curve um, shape, converted it to polygons, and then just did a little bit of poly editing to give it some thickness, right? So here's just an example. I'm going to show you another one. Here's another example of the curve version of I was working on a gun for my my unreleased project. Um, but here's what I started with, right? So just a series of curves, it looks complex. But again, it's just it starts by drawing one curve at a time, you know, kind of figuring out where you want forms to transition. So this is just one half of a rifle, right? But you can see that I take all of these and again, using things like I showed you. So let's say I wanted to create a patch between these lines here. See, I have one, two, three, four. This line here needs to be divided. So let's let's use a real example. So 
again, going to curves, I have this long curve, I want it to be split where this profile intersects it. I just select both of these and I hit detach. Okay. Now I'm going to do again a by rail because this is one profile, this is a second profile, and I want it to be extruded along this particular curve. So I'm going to go to surfaces by rail and by rail two, since we have two profiles, select both. Now it's looking for rails. Okay. And that's how I do it is that I create a patch and I'm just creating this rifle using a series of patches. And this can get kind of intense when you're doing complicated models and you may kind of wonder, well, why don't I just use polys? Well, you can just use polys, but for certain, um, kind of, again, elegant changing of forms, curves kind of just create a nice result. And it's going to require you to do some poly modeling after to attach these all together, making sure that each of these has, um, a similar amount of segments. And I'm going to show you what this looks like in patch form. So once the curves have all been done, you can convert this into polys. And this isn't my reworked version. It's a little bit messy, but you can see that that is kind of the workflow, right? So you can create a series of patches now and do some attaching. So this is an example of where uh, the number of patches really matters. This is an example of where the number of segments in your curve actually has a difference, right? So in this example, the top and the middle here do not match up. So there was some poly modeling that had to be adjusted there. But you wanna make sure that for the sake of edge flow, in general, you try and keep it the same amount of spans per patch if you know where it's gonna connect, right? So in this example, these all had the same number because I knew that this was gonna flow all the way through the model. This is going to be a high res model, so I'm not too worried about the like the poly count and all that stuff. All right, so just showing you an example of how you can use this, how you can use curves to create some elegant shapes. All right, guys, so hopefully that gave you an idea of how you can use curves to help with the mesh creation, geometry creation. Uh, hope you thought it was useful, and thanks for watching.